When I graduated from medicine, I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do in life when I grew up. I was young, I graduated quite young. And then the subsequent dean said to me, well, he says, would you go out in the country and, and spend a year or two? And I went to Dauphin and the year and two became 10. Uh, but that was the 1970s and during that decade, we were really seeing the front edge of the asthma epidemic, the early part of what really has become the allergy epidemic over the last part of the last century and continuing especially explosively now in this 21st century in terms of food allergy. 3,500 children from across Canada have been involved in the child study an extensive research project which investigates both genetic disposition and environmental factors on children's development, particularly as those factors relate to asthma and allergies. I don't know where you're going, Afi, you funny. You are funny, you're a funny guy, yes. I mean, we set out to do a prevention of asthma study. And at that point, although we thought we knew everything we needed to know about asthma, when we began to think about the environment, our thinking was way too limited. And it's not just the dog and cat and dust mite that you breathe in, and it's not just tobacco smoke that you're exposed to, and it's, it's not just the out of door pollution, it's way more than that. It's our nutrition, it's the stress that we live under, it's all sorts of things that you don't begin to think of. Chemical exposures, uh, the exposures to allergens may in fact be good. We've never thought about exposure to bacteria as a good thing, but in the last few years we're recognizing the bacteria that lives in us and live on us really play an important role in the development of our immune system and the development of health or disease. So when you think about the studies that you're doing right now, there are other bits of information that are going to come in that will probably pertain to completely different areas of healthcare. Absolutely. And so the child study that we, where we're focusing on asthma and allergy as the main outcomes really is the lead-in to following these children where we're really intensively studying their genetic background, the environment, their response to the environment. I anticipate this is gonna be a really important group of children and families that we need to follow until these kids are into the, at least their young adult years. I was just gonna ask that because I understand that the study is, was originally planned as a five-year study and you're coming to the end of that now. But you're not gonna let these kids go now, right? <laughs> we, we originally planned child to follow from the, the womb till age five when they're school age. And by age five, we expect to see around 15 kids out of 100 who will have asthma and others who will have other allergy-associated diseases. So you'll be able to extrapolate though from the information that you already have from them. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the work we're doing in terms of looking at the genetics has become increasingly inexpensive. So we can now analyze an entire genome uh, for a reasonable amount of money. And we are collecting samples that we anticipate we will be analyzing in years to come for all sorts of things we haven't yet begun to think about. There's been this big increase in asthma, an epidemic, as you say. Why? <laughs> uh, I wish I had an answer for you. Uh, we know that the epidemic has been dramatic over the last part of the last century for asthma. But what we've seen explode in the beginning of the 21st century has been food allergy. It has skyrocketed in terms of how much food allergy is out there. And it's, I mean, it's really scary. Uh, in the 1990s, every national pediatric medical organization said, we're seeing all of this uh, allergy and asthma, maybe we should 
tell families that they shouldn't be introducing these highly allergenic foods too early to their children. Don't give your kid cow's milk till they're a year of age. Don't give them eggs till they're 18 months of age. Uh, don't give them peanut till they're in university. All of that has been associated with a dramatic increase in food allergies. And there's some evidence that early introduction of at least some of these foods may actually decrease the risk of developing allergy. We said, get rid of your pets. Well, it may be, in fact, that having pets in the home will help prevent development of asthma and allergy. But maybe that's only if you're not too clean in your home. And the whole issue of this hygiene hypothesis that we, in the 20th century, became too clean for our own good, and that we need to have some of these early life exposures to bacteria. Microflora, the bacteria that reside within the gut, play a significant role in the development of the immune system. One of the earliest publications we have from child is actually about that. The, in fact, we sent this in about the difference in bacteria in the guts of infants at three months of age, which is when we collect poop from these kids in the child study. We've known for decades that if you're delivered by cesarean section, you have a small but significant increased risk of that child having asthma, and have had no idea why. Well, in this study, we were able to show that if you were delivered by cesarean section, you had a hugely different gut microflora, bacteria in your gut at three months of age, compared to kids that had a normal vaginal delivery. And that was modified to some degree by breastfeeding. So that breastfeeding, good. Will it prevent asthma? Can't promise that, but it's a good thing for all sorts of reasons. But cesarean sections, now a quarter of the deliveries in, in Canada, a third of deliveries in the United States, is definitely associated with an increased risk. And it may be because of the bacteria in our gut. So I imagine around the world, there are people that are aware of this study and that are anxiously awaiting the results that happen at the end of this five years. Absolutely, and, and well before the five years. In fact, we're constantly being, being bothered by our colleagues in the United States especially, where they've had a great deal of difficulty putting together a national birth cohort. Uh, they are drooling when they look at what we have in Canada. Everybody's interested in poop. <laughs>